We're taking a look at allergic reactions, the body's response to foreign bodies that it needs to get rid of, and a common medication that people use on a regular basis to treat these things. So let's dive in deeper to Benadryl. Today we're discussing Benadryl. Benadryl is an antihistamine, which means it blocks the histamine response. But what exactly is a histamine and how does Benadryl go about blocking it? We're gonna take a look at that in a little bit more detail and then talk about some uses for this medication along with some side effects and some things we wanna watch out for. Before we jump into that though, I do have to say, this is for informational purposes only. I'm just another guy putting together a video out on the web. So don't take this as medical direction or medical consult. Make sure you check with your physician uh, to make sure that dosing and indications are right for you. And always follow the directions on the back of the drug medications themselves for instructions on how to use those medications. All right, so we're taking a look at Benadryl, which is a anti-inflammatory or an antihistamine. But first off, let's go over some basics about this medication. So the generic name for Benadryl is diphenhydramine. So you may notice that diphenhydramine sounds similar to other medications that are antihistamines like Dramamine or Promethazine, but some of these other medications we might use for a different symptom uh, because they work a little bit differently and act on different histamine receptors. The most common brand name for diphenhydramine is Benadryl. So that is the brand that is selling this generically named diphenhydramine drug, um, but you can find a lot of house brands for that as well. So the drug class that this medication is in is called an antihistamine. There are histamines in our body that cause inflammation and swelling, and that's where we see hives and um, even some uh, mucosal drainage and everything from allergies. And so what we're doing is we are you, taking this medication and we're blocking those histamines from being able to uh, bind to those histamine receptors. Now Benadryl typically in a capsule form or in a tablet form is 25 milligrams or 50 milligrams. 50 milligrams is typically the extra strength. The recommendation for dosing from Benadryl is to take one to two of these tablets, either the regular strength of 25 or the extra strength of 50, and take one or two of these every four to six hours. Benadryl can be used in some children, um, but is not recommended in infants, and you do wanna make sure that you are using the regular strength with children. So as always, follow the back of the medication there uh, for the specifics on dosing. All right, so let me pause for a second. If you find this video helpful, leave us a like, that would really help us out. And if you have any questions over any of the stuff we're talking about, or if you have another experience or perspective that you would like to share, we'd love to hear from you. Leave us a comment below. And if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button and make sure your notifications are on so you get alerts when we post future videos. All right, so if you've watched any of our previous videos we've done on medications such as aspirin and Advil, we talk about those being NSAIDs, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. Well, those are anti-inflammatories, and this Benadryl, this antihistamine, is also a form of anti-inflammatory, but it works in a different way. So around our body, we have these histamines, and histamines are bound up inside uh, different types of cells, specifically mast cells. So there are also basophils and other cells that have histamines, but let's talk specifically about mast cells. So a mast cell is like a defense mechanism around your body. It's lying in wait, waiting for some foreign body to come in so it can release these histamines and start to attack this foreign body. So think of mast cells as guards. You have guards around a castle and these guards are just sitting there waiting for some foreign invasion to come into the castle. And so the guards are simply sitting there waiting and then once there is some sort of reaction, these guards will then release histamines and those histamines will then begin the process of trying to uh, increase swelling, increase uh, inflammation and all these properties to be able to get rid of that foreign body that's not supposed to be in the body. So we have different types of histamine receptors. We have H1, H2, H3, and H4. The main one that we're concerned about today is H1. So H1 receptors primarily found just underneath your skin and also in your respiratory tract. So that's why when we have an allergic reaction to something like peanuts 
or a bee sting. We have the hives and the itching that happens all over our skin. We also have some swelling of the airway um, and you might have an itchy airway or an itchy neck because that's where those mast cells are and that's where those specific histamines, um, those H1 histamines live. You also have some H1 histamines that are in your central nervous system, so your brain and your spinal cord. So when you have a histamine response like an allergic reaction, you now also have a heightened sense of awareness because those histamines in your central nervous system are now activated as well. You also have some histamines in your gut and that's why you can have some direct relation to nausea and vomiting as well when you have some uh, histamine releases. But for the most part, it's the H2 receptors that are more commonly found in your gut and so a different type of antihistamine is typically used for nausea and vomiting, something like a Dramamine or a Promethazine, which is also known as Finergan. Okay, but let's not get sidetracked. Let's get back to Benadryl for a minute. So, Benadryl works primarily on H1 receptors. We just discussed that those are primarily in the skin, also respiratory tract, and then we also have some in our central nervous system. So, when we have a histamine release, we get hives, we get itching, we also get a heightened sense of awareness from the central nervous system, then we have some inflammation and some swelling in our airway, in our respiratory tract, um, and we can even have some bronchospasms as well from the smooth muscles in our lungs. Now, the amount that your body reacts to a foreign body invasion, something from a peanut or a bee sting, or even something minor like pollen, that's gonna vary from each independent person and how their body fights off those particular things. That's why some people may be allergic to bee stings and some people not. Some people may be more sensitive to pollen while some others are not. Now some of this has to do with how much the body is already used to these things. If you have someone that is outside in the pollen and dust on a regular basis, then a little bit of pollen or dust does not usually affect them. Their body's used to seeing those things. If you have someone that is not around pollen or dust, and then they get exposed to that, the body doesn't know what to think of this and it kicks into overdrive and that's where you'll get a larger response of those histamines from. Benadryl, then being an antihistamine, binds to certain receptors and prevents the body from then releasing those histamines into the body. So if we have an overactive immune system that is releasing more histamines than is normal, we can take a Benadryl and then that will help slow some of the symptoms we're feeling from that overactive immune system. Now, I'm a big believer that prevention is the best medicine. So if we are outside on a regular basis in the pollen and the dust, and we have been ever since we were a kid, we're gonna be a lot more immune to a lot of those things, and thus we won't need to take medications to ward off some of the symptoms that we're now experiencing because we're never exposed to those elements. There's also studies that have shown that people can take small amounts of poison ivy and gradually they keep increasing the amount of poison ivy they're exposed to and then over time they now build up an immunity to poison ivy because their body's used to seeing that on a regular basis. This same treatment also is effective for um, other allergens such as bee stings and wasp stings. There are therapies where they will inject small amounts of these venoms into the body, allow the body to start to get used to it so it builds up an immunity over time. Then you hopefully won't need epinephrine and Benadryl and some of these other medications when you come in contact with that in the future. So Benadryl is a good medication to block a histamine response, but what are some of the dangers of taking Benadryl? Well, like some other medications, Benadryl is broken down and metabolized in the liver. So it is hard on the liver anytime the liver has to break down these medications. In low doses, it's not a big deal. Larger doses can be a problem for the liver, especially if you have some underlying liver disease. So if you have liver disease or any issues with your liver, consult a physician before taking any type of medication that gets broken down and metabolized in the liver. Another concern with antihistamines, and particularly Benadryl, is that these first-generation antihistamines like Finergan and Benadryl, they cross the blood-brain barrier, which means they move from the bloodstream into the brain. So now our brain is affected from these antihistamines. Well, remember we talked about having some receptors and some histamines in the brain. So now that we have Benadryl in our system, it will cross into our central nervous system. It'll start to make you sleepy and depressed and lethargic 
and you get those reactions from taking those antihistamines. It's also been shown that in large quantities, it can actually have brain damage um, and can even cause a coma or even death in high doses. So you do wanna make sure you're following proper dosing, only using medications if they actually need to be used and don't just treat these things like candy and pop them anytime you get a little stuffy nose. Now there are some second and third generation antihistamines which are a little bit more targeted. They've had some time to refine these things and sometimes they're more targeted to a specific histamine rather than being a broader um, approach targeting multiple histamines. So you can target one medication more specifically to the specific symptom that you have. And another plus to these other generations of antihistamines is that these do not cross the blood brain barrier. So we don't have the drowsiness and the lethargy that we get from the first generation such as Benadryl. One other thing I'll go ahead and throw in here is if you are a parent watching this, be aware that there are Benadryl challenges going around on the internet as well. TikTok, Instagram, some of these places have these Benadryl challenges and several kids have died from overdosing on Benadryl. So be aware that that is out there and make sure that you are aware of side effects of Benadryl so that you are not taking too large of doses inadvertently as well. Like any medication, Benadryl can be useful to help with some symptoms of some underlying process that's going on. Some people's bodies have an overactive immune system and you start to get all these side effects and symptoms when you're exposed to an allergen. Benadryl can be a great way to depress some of those symptoms and keep some of those symptoms at bay, allowing you to continue on with a normal life. But like with any medication, there's always side effects. You're not gonna take any medication that doesn't have some form of side effects. So only use these medications if they're absolutely needed and make sure that you're following proper dosing for these medications. Also keep in mind with medications, you wanna take the minimum dose viable to get rid of the symptoms and to be able to treat what you're trying to treat without adding any more to that than is absolutely necessary. And just remember that most of the side effects of medications come with overdosing or adding too much to this medication or chronic use of a particular medication. So generally speaking, a dose here or there of Benadryl is not gonna harm you, but if in doubt, always make sure to consult a physician on that. Well, we hope you found this video helpful and we hope that that gave you a little bit deeper insight into Benadryl and how it works. And as always, stay vigilant and stay safe.